Hey everybody, it's Heather the Painter here, and if you hear any gnawing sounds, it's probably Jack, who is sitting at my feet chewing a reindeer antler at the moment, so I apologize for that extra feedback, uh, but he he's in here and he's helping me paint. So I wanted to walk you through um, just some really cool uh, things to do with some of these new signature brushes that I've created. They are for use in Corel Painter 2016. And unfortunately, they're not backwards compatible with earlier versions, so you're stuck with them in 16. But they, uh, the features that they provide and just the functionality will make up for it, and they're really, really cool. So it should be mentioned here that you really do need to have a pressure-sensitive stylus when you're working with these brushes, like your Wacom tablet or a bamboo um, or a Cintiq, something that has pressure sensitivity or you're just not going to get any functionality with these brushes. So I've loaded, installed all three of these. I've got the Sketchy Blenders, the Sketchy and Signature Full Brush Pack, which is 19 brushes. And the full pack includes both the Sketchy and the Signature when you buy them on the store. Or I've got the Heather's Signature Brushes, which are two of my favorite brushes to do writing or line drawings or line art, or just kind of some messy calligraphy. So I'm going to talk about those today. Uh, one of the beauties that these offer is you can make really, really nice, clean, or I should say in this case, kind of messy, um, non-scanned, digital-looked uh, words or files or shapes, which are really great to be able to use in Photoshop or um, some kind of editing software is clipping masks. And this is great for logos. You can do um, unlimited editing to them, and I'll show you this afterwards. So the important step here is you need to make them on a separate layer. You can see there's no white being picked up from the underneath. And that's coming because I do not have this pickup underlying color checked, which you typically have checked if you are painting portraits. But when we're doing these black shapes, we want to make sure that is not checked. So I'm going to start a brand new document here. I'll give myself like an 8 by 8 at 300. Make sure your color of your paper is white. It doesn't matter what your paper texture is set to with this first brush, but it will on the second, and I'll explain that in a second. So I'm going to mount my canvas. That's Command M for mount, or Control M if you're on a PC. I'm working on a Mac. So I'm going to go to the first brush. I'm going to reset it so you see it exactly how it comes out of the box. And I'll show you what it does without any, any adjustments. So if we were to turn off the brush calibration, we just kind of have a little bit of a boring brush. And it makes like the sloppy ink mark. But when we turn on our brush calibration, I'm going to clear this. You've got your brush calibration box, which is found, if you don't have it open, it's under window. Brush control panels, and it's down here, brush calibration. So it will come clustered with a whole bunch of palettes. And you can move it by clicking on the name and dragging it out. Now, since I've already dragged it out, I'm going to close these, and I've got brush calibration. So I'm going to enable brush calibration. I'm going to click on the bottom right icon. So Painter is kind of setting a baseline for my pressure and my um, speed from the time I touch down to the time I lift up. Now, you can make as many doodles in here as you'd like, but it's only really taking note of the last one that you make. So if you don't know what to doodle in here, just do the first letter of your name. What I'm trying to get is a lot of variability. I don't want to have something that's just so nice and matchy-matchy, or we're not going to get any variability in our brush. So this is telling Painter how quickly and how much pressure is our standard use. And Painter's going to really make some magic here in a second. So now this brush shows extreme variation. I mean, you can literally hover your pen over the brush or over the tablet and it makes these nice thin lines. Or you can press down really hard and get a really thick brush mark. So we get a lot of variation here, which is great. Okay, so to make our clipping mask shape, say you want to make it your logo, you want to make a signature, these are really good ways to do it. I'm going to make sure I'm in my layers palette. I'm going to click add new layer. And remember, you have to make sure pickup underlying color is not selected. This is enormous here. If you have the selected, it's going to pick up white from the underneath and your mask is going to be a little bit messy. So we don't want to have that happen. 
and I'm going to sign Jack's name Jack. Now this isn't giving me as much variation as I want so I'm going to reset my brush calibration. Now we're talking here. You see how I get that nice thin line? And did you notice I did not change the brush size at all? So anytime you reset your brush calibration, it's just becoming more and more sensitive to your hand gestures. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to make a new layer. And now that I like this, I'm signing Jack's name with his permission. There we go. And with this brush, if you don't move quickly enough, you're going to get this little squirt of ink. And occasionally that'll come up. So if that happens, we can see that on the end of our C or on the end of the K here. We can take our eraser tool, make sure it's a nice hard edge. We don't want a soft eraser. And I can zoom in, make a small eraser, and that you see I uh, resized it very quickly. That shortcut on a Mac is Command Option and draw a circle. On a PC, it is Control Alt, draw a circle. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Just get rid of that little splotch. It's like an ink drop or a um, ink splatter. Take out the little top on the A. Maybe this bottom part here at the hook of the C. And I can see it here at the uh, end of the J. So I'm just going to clean that up. Much better. So if we hide the underlying canvas, we can see we have a perfectly clean black shape, which is absolutely required if you're going to be making a clipping mask. So I'm going to clean up just this little bit of paw print. There we go. Okay. So here's the other really essential step. If you save this, you need to make sure that you're saving it as an uncompressed Photoshop file. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'll put this on the desktop for now, and I'm going to name it Jack Word. Make sure it's a Photoshop file. We have got to click Uncompressed. Everything else can be checked. But if this isn't uncompressed, occasionally it'll come in a flattened form. So I'm going to hit Save. And I'm going to take this into Photoshop. And you'll have to bear with me as my Photoshop is a little outdated. I'm on CS6, but this will work in um, most versions of Photoshop as well as Elements, I believe. So I'm going to open up that new document. Did Jack Word. And I'm going to show you how cool a clipping mask is. So essentially a clipping mask is a mask that literally clips to the shape of the black shape underneath of it. And what that means is we will look at our layer one. I'm just going to click on this and click Jack just to let me know that it's a Jack name. We're going to add a new layer from the bottom. It has got to be above your black shape. So anything can fill this layer one. I'm going to fill it. So edit fill or take your paint can. So above we've got our color or filled layer and below it we have our black shape. If we come up to layer, create clipping mask, you'll see that this color snaps to the shape that's underneath of it. Now we can essentially put anything in here. We can put an image, we can put a texture, we can draw on it, we can have different colors. So you can fill your black shape with anything with a clipping mask. At any time we can change that color and you'll notice that it's keeping our, our black shape nice and clean. Now this comes in handy. I'm going to get rid of my clipping mask here. Because if we were just to tap on our black shape and hopefully fill it with whatever color we had, I'm going to fill all of it. Oops, undo. Can we see how messy it is doing it this way? Or if we keep changing our mind and going, well, that's not pink enough, and we keep adding more color. It's just a very messy way to go about doing this. So I'm going to revert it back to the original. And I'm going to keep this as a completely um, forever editable clipping mask. So remember, you've got to have a blank layer above. This is what you're going to fill it with. And you have to have your black shape underneath. So we would pick a color. I'm going to pick Jack's blue. 
And then we go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask. So it clips or it masks itself to the black shape underneath. So now at this point we can change this blue color. And we can even add texture or brush marks, whatever you would like. If you save it in the layered format, so say I go File, Save As, I'm going to name it Jack Word, Blue 1. Name, uh, save it as a Photoshop file. It's going to remember these layers. So at any time, we can come back in and edit this color. Now, if you get to the point where you want to move it over top of a painting as a signature or a logo, you're going to have to move both of these layers together if you want to be able to edit this color at any time. Because if we move both of them, and for some bizarre reason, we come back and start moving that black shape around, and it's not underneath that blue layer, it's going to show up as black again. So you can see how I've moved my black layer over. So just make sure they're being moved together. And that is how you create a clipping mask using these really cool brushes. Let me show you the difference between the two signature brushes here. So going back into Painter 16, we can see this is the Heather Signature Brush. Now we have a second option that's called Heather Signature Grainy. I'm going to create a new layer. Make sure this middle guy is unchecked. We have got to be on black for this to work. And I'm going to write his name again. Uh, let me set my brush calibration. Now there's a big difference between these brushes. You get the same functionality with it, but this one now picks up paper texture which is found in your tools palette. Right here, I am currently set to Artist Canvas. Let's change it to something crazy. So let's go to Small Dots and just make a, make a mark. So you can see our paper texture that's coming out is dots. If we put the Featherland, you can see now we've got that paper texture showing through. So this brush was designed to show a paper texture. You can change your paper texture at any time, but just know that it does not retroactively update the marks that you've already made. This could actually be really cool for a logo. So if we make a heart or something sloppy or you know a smiley face, we could use these as clipping masks. So you see that paper texture is not actually showing like any kind of color, it's just showing empty space. This is ideal when you want to make logos or cute little hand-drawn graphics for your marketing pieces. Um, you know, it's, it's quite limitless here. This is great for art journaling, um, handwritten notes if you want to hand sign something, or have it look like it's hand signed and not stamped with a text tool or a, uh, a scanned shape. So play with those different paper textures and see what inspires you and just keep doodling, keep drawing. And if at any time that brush just doesn't behave or it's not giving you enough functionality or variability, make sure that you just reset your brush calibration by clicking on this bottom right icon. And what I do is I try to make sure that I lift my pen fully off that tablet because that's going to give me really nice expression here. So now I'm going to clear out everything. There we go, Jack the Painter. Let's try this one more time. There we go, much better. So see how with very little pressure I get a very thin, fine line, but with a little bit of a thicker pressure, I get this wider or more solid mark. And I love the variation that I'm getting here. This reminds me of my old calligraphy days. So I guess this is kind of the essential um, sloppy calligraphy brush or slightly erratic inking brush. But you can have a lot of fun with it in creating logos, text, uh, writing, journaling, all of that good stuff. Just make sure that you're on a separate layer with these if you want to be able to use those black shapes in any, you know, any art project. So this is Heather the Painter. You can find these brushes. They're on sale uh, for October 2015 or I should say November now that we're in November, November 2015, at www.heatherthepainterstore.com.